ones, it's Victor for the Gimme Flake Man channel, wearing a hat because I have no personality. No, not true. Wearing a hat because uh, two people said they hate the hat, so that's just going to make me want to wear it more. Today I'll be answering questions from a guy named Joshua who uh, contacted me. I don't usually um, agree to this kind of stuff, but you know, uh, you know me, I gotta be the helpful SOB. So, anyway, this guy's gonna be coming over in January and he's gonna stay for six months and possibly stay six months longer. And he says, So far I have resolved a lot of issues, but some questions still remain. Uh, which will determine my quality of life and whether I'll get an extension on my visa. So, here are his questions. Number one, what is the cost of living exclusively for food, toiletries, weekly, weekly and monthly? It depends on how much you eat. I don't know how much you need. Uh, I think you can probably get by on the mark, the crazy German cyclist diet, if you watch um, my past videos about him. Uh, he likes to go to Yoshinoya every day, spend about 500 yen there. That's about five bucks. You can probably get by on a really tight budget quite easily. I mean, eat well, I think, on a thousand yen a day if you cook for yourself, if you have some kind of capability, or go to a Hyakuen uh, dollar store that sells that kind of stuff, uh, meaning food. Uh, so let's say 300 bucks a month on just food, right? And um, if on toiletries, I don't know, how often do you wipe your butt? Do you wipe your butt? Do you need toilet paper? Can you go buy with newspapers? I, true story, I knew a guy who was being paid very well at the YWCA where I used to work many, many years ago, who saved money by collect. He was a he was a really really nice guy, but one of the cheapest SOBs I've ever met. He would uh, at, at the subway station they hand out tissues, right? Tissues with little advertising. He would collect them. He would always keep them, and he would wipe his butt with those and not, you know, buy toilet paper. <laughs> Personally, uh, I like toilet paper. Right? I like it. Um, Maggie likes it. She likes having her wipe, her butt wipe. Who doesn't like having their butt wipe? <laughs> so uh, let's say, let's throw in another 5000 or 50 bucks a month for brushing your teeth, uh, soap, maybe shampoo. You can get away with no shampoo, I suppose, or very little shampoo, and wiping your butt and that kind of stuff. So I don't know. And m maybe, maybe there's another 50 bucks for things unforeseen. So 400 bucks would probably easily take care of that. And then, of course, you have to think about your rent and all that. Uh, in Nagoya, I have seen some places for rent that as low as three hundred dollars, uh, for real dumpy places. But in those cases, you usually have to put up, uh, or you have to agree to stay there for six months or two years or something. I, there is a guest house here in Nagoya that um, no, nothing ever lasts. Stayed out. They charge four hundred dollars or yongman. I'm sorry, forty thousand yen a month. So that's a pretty good deal, I think. You have internet and you have a bed, you don't have to buy anything. Um, showers included, internet's included. So yeah, toilet, they probably give you even toilet paper. I think the only thing you have to pay for it really is if you want to buy it, rent a towel, you have to pay 200 yen, things like that. So if you get your own toiletries and you stay there, you know, you could probably get by on, um, what did I say, 400? Yeah, 880,000 yen, which is about 900 bucks or so quite well, you know, and, and have a little money for beer left over. See, that's another question. Do you drink? Because if you drink, then that's another cost. And a beer, a, a decent beer, will cost you $2.50 a can, of the small regular can, right? And the cheap, if you, cheap, if you drink the cheap crap, you can, of course, uh, probably have three uh, alcoholic beverages for that price. You buy a bottle of vodka, whatever. Anyway, that's, I mean, that's for people who really need this. They need the juice. Do you need the juice? That's the question. Number two question. What kind of jobs can a Gaijin typically get other than an English teacher? If you're coming over here on a student visa, you're allowed, I believe, you look it up though, and depending on your country maybe, uh, to work 20 hours a week on the student visa. If you are an English teacher, you can get minimum 2,000 yen an hour, uh, even if you're from New Zealand, and they seem to undercut a lot of people. If Filipinos cut even more people out, you know, uh, undercut even more people. Uh, but this guy says if you're not other than an English teacher, then you could work in a bar. You could be a waiter or waitress or a bartender. You could work as a hostess if you're an attractive young lady, especially if you have cleavage. So apparently quite easy. That is a risk, I would say a slightly risky area. It, could, it, it can be safe if you're safe, if you've got a good head on your shoulders. I suppose it's just as dangerous as driving a taxi in New York City, which is what I did in college. Uh, if, you, if you're careful, you know. 
Um, being a hostess doesn't mean you're a prostitute. It means you look pretty and you chat up customers and drink and make them drink more and spend a lot of money at a bar. So there's always that. And that is, there, are, there is a place here in Nagoya that has exclusively Gaijin women. And I'm pretty sure that uh, they're the kind of girls who would never waste their time on an average salaried guy like me. Not a rich guy, right? So they're looking for the, I think they're trying to land fishes. But what do I know? Maybe a lot of them are just putting themselves through college. If one of them is watching this, I'd love to interview you, by the way. Uh, other than that, unless you have a specialized skill like you are amazing with the guitar or you can do magic or some crap like that, not that crap, but you know, unless you can do something like that, then, you know, then I wouldn't uh, bet on it working, doing anything else, right? Unless you have an amazing skill. It's got, but it's got to be so amazing that the language barrier would not be a barrier. It would just be a slight hindrance to your uh, business. Okay, uh, let's see. Then he adds, I have exceptional knowledge and experience in computer programming, etc., etc. I've got a few emails from people who are like, oh, I'm an expert in this and that and those. But unless you have a language skills, number one, and number two, a license. There have been cases of people who went to, to volunteer in Tohoku as doctors, but because they're not licensed doctors, uh, the Japanese quickly decided, no, you can't do any of that stuff because you don't have a license here. So you can help us move crap around, you know, and that's what they ended up doing loading up trucks with crap and garbage and rubble and hauling it away which is a shame because they really do need doctors up there so unless you're qualified uh, you know if you have a lot unless you have a license and I wouldn't count on doing anything like that and uh, about computer stuff I don't know how international the computing language is maybe I'm wrong but I would say they probably have enough people here already who do what you do and speak fluent Japanese on top of it so I really doubt you'd be hired to do anything else. However, a, a couple of things you could do is make YouTube videos uh, of the viral <laughs> level, and that might actually help you pay the bills. Of course, if you need the money in Japan, you'd have to get your bank here in Japan. You'd have to open up a bank account here, and Google would have to verify it. It's a pain in the ass. The other option is to work online somehow, which is always an option. Uh, if you're a student, you have your student visa, and that would be the option, making home pages for people overseas. There's a site here in Japan called, not in Japan, somewhere called like $5 or something. I'll do it for $5. I suppose if you're really clever, if you're clever, you can figure out how to live off the internet doing stuff like that. But, and maybe getting paid by it through PayPal and things like that. But working actually in an establishment here might be tough. Though, if you do get a chance to work in a factory or a bar and a restaurant or, or a pub or izakaya, it is a great way to improve your Japanese. And if you have such a chance, I would definitely jump on it even if the pay is not that good. Okay, number three, uh, I generally hear definitely from one of my friends who has lived in Japan for several years. Oh, by the way, about getting jobs in other fields. The other thing is connections. Uh, if you really want to work somehow in a Japanese company, the best bet is probably to apply to that company before coming over here or going through a university and talking to professors and seeing about their job placements programs or getting introduced because in Japan, a, a lot of it is uh, who you know. And an example is that of that is I contacted a talent agency where, where I used to, believe it or not, model and appear in commercials. Little stuff, local stuff, nothing big, and very rarely, you know. Uh, but the pay was good when it happened, you know, and I, ha I happened to have the day off. But anyway, the woman called me back and said, I know somebody who's looking to hire a German employee work, to work at a company, uh, but he must be German, and he has to have some interest in computers and robots. And that's like, that's Mark, right? And he has experience with that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and, you know, and you know he's a robot. So, so thanks to the connection, he might actually, he's going to get an, inter an inter interview for sure. That's the first step, right? But thanks to that connection, he may, he may actually have a chance uh, to work in a German company in Japan, which would be amazing for him, right? Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Victor. If he gets it. But look, my point being, it's who you know. So build connections. Connections are important. Uh, okay. Number three, I generally hear definitely from one of my friends who has lived in Japan for several years that girl, girls are relatively easy to get. If this is true, why is that? I don't know. I'm not a girl. Do you see a vagina on me? No. Um, not at this, month, not at this uh, moment. Exactly. No, seriously. Uh, why? Because we're exotic. This, like, look, I was in New York City and this British guy was like, um, what's that called? Playing guitar or something on the street. And these, these really hot New York girls were like, say something in British, you know? And it's like, what, what do you mean? What would you like me to say? And I know that's a terrible British accent, but I'm, this is not about that right now. I'll work on that later, okay? But anyway, he was, he was, uh, yeah, he would just say something. And goes, oh, he's so exotic, or, or you know, 
Jamaican guys with their amazing accents. You know, any whatever accent you think is cool. The French guy, right? There was a, there was a French girl in, in uh, New York who was, I would say she was above average looking, but the French accent on her made her oh so sexy. So that's what it is, right? Um, anyway, that's part of the appeal, uh, having the Gaijin boyfriend. In a lot also, of cases, foreigners just have a reputation for being gentlemen. That they're going to open the door for you and do the, all the ladies first stuff and, you know, be gallant and all that crap. The image that Hollywood has sold you. Uh, and in a lot of cases that is true, but, not, but the problem is a lot of foreigners, and this is terrible, but it's true. A lot of foreigners have the uh, feeling or they have the idea that I want a Japanese girl because she's going to treat me like a king. And get me my beer when I want it and all this crap, you know, and, and serve me and, you know, and treat me like a man, like a man should be treated, whatever that is. But, so there's, there's those dueling expectations. So she wants the gentleman and he wants more of submissive woman. But not always, and there are a lot of cases in which uh, communication, in, in the end, you're just two human beings, so communication is important, but that's not about this. Why, why do Japanese women like gaijin guys? Because we're, fo we're foreign, basically. Uh, I understand the gaijin effect exists, he says. And I honestly want to avoid people who only like me where, be, because of where I come from. I would say do not avoid people who are nice to you, especially women, because they have what you want. No, seriously. And, and the same goes for women and men. Get to know them. Maybe, honestly, the initial um, attraction is based on something superficial like your country of origin or your passport. But, if the, the, but it could uh, develop and evolve into something deeper and real uh, and in the end it will just you will just have to see if you can make a human connection though I, I will admit I've been out with uh, I was out with a woman who apparently only was interested in me uh, on a physical level and and hearing me speak English which ironically she could not understand any of so it was kind of a pointless relationship for me anyway uh, because I'm not that shallow I'm kind of shallow, but I'm not that shallow. Okay. So, genuine people exist all over the world, and in the end, you know, you're just going to have to get past the cultural differences and the language barriers and get to that person. Okay. Next question. How do mothers, fathers, exam example, normally react to their child dating a gaijin? My wife had no problem with it, my, her parents, and when I um, actually went over to their house to propose, I, I'd already proposed to her, of course, but I went to the house and I said, I would like to... If it's okay, you know, if you guys are okay with this, I'd like to marry your daughter. And they both started crying. And I, I am told, and I, I, to this day, hand to God, I believe those were tears of joy. And if anything, the mother was like, why didn't you tell me he was coming over to say this? I would have gotten more expensive sushi. Because they just picked up some, you know, some of that. Or they order out sushi. I don't know. What, I don't know what they would have, you know, break open some champagne or something. But they were cool with it, but uh, many, many years ago, I knew a gaijin girl. Uh, I dated a gaijin girl for a long time. Not a gaijin girl, psh, Japanese girl. And her parents were like, oh, we like Victor, you can date him, have your fun. But remember, you're dating a Japanese guy in the end. So, and, she, and the funny thing was, she was not racist at all. And she would date any kind of race at all. She had no problem dating someone, but when it came to marriage, that was something that, yeah, she was going to go along with her parents. Um, so, uh, honestly though, with that particular woman, and I would, I would, I hesitate to say, I dare say, and I, I dare say that, that the, the, um, the one thing that will fix all, <laughs> will make everyone look the same color, is the color green. Uh, I think if I were rich, I think in a lot of cases if someone is rich, really doesn't matter where you're from, the parents will be able to see their way past that. So that's my personal opinion. I've seen, I knew an Arab guy who actually had two illegal wives here in Japan. One was legal, one was his other wife. And they, were, they all knew about it, you know, because he was loaded. And even the parents knew about it, so it was bizarre. Yeah, really weird. It was one of my students' um, sisters, actually, so. Very bizarre. Uh, okay. So, and of course I did the stupid thing by advising her to maybe not be involved with him and if anything that just pushed them away from me or they, you know, they're like, okay, we don't want to talk to you anymore. Number four, none of your business, Victor, you're just an English teacher. Okay. Yeah. Number four, uh, is it difficult to deal with immigration, meaning is it difficult to get an extension or file paperwork or a different visa? I think it's getting easier and easier and they're actually doing a new um, 
Gaijin card, I think this month actually, I meant to make a video on it, but yeah, there's a new Gaijin card coming out this month, it's going to be much easier. In the old days, you had to leave the country to change your visa from a tourist visa to a working visa. Apparently now it can all be done here. Uh, I did it and it was a lot of paperwork. I applied for my permanent visa about six months ago or so, I don't remember, but it was, uh, no, three months ago. It was a lot of paperwork, go to the bank, get this, and go to the check, prove, prove you're married, get your taxes in order, all these papers you had to show. But then just fill it out. It took me like two hours of filling out after I gathered this stuff. So maybe in all, it must have taken less than eight hours of gathering papers and getting things stamped here and there. So, yeah, it's difficult, but I mean, just like any bureaucratic mess, you know, of a country. That's why South American countries are better, because you just give them a little money and they take care of it. Okay. Uh, right. This might be off topic, next question, but I plan to be a jade logger. And I'd like to get some advice. Could you tell me your experiences so far and what kind of feedback you've uh, received from your viewers? That's, an, that's a whole different video in itself, and I will make that video uh, soon. I would say I like being a J-blogger. Um, I'm glad that such a word exists. I think I'd like to... I, I feel personally, honestly, personally responsible for helping promote that whole concept of J-blogging. Me and a lot of others, of course. Not, I didn't do it alone, but, but I was part of that movement, you know, one of the beginning, one of the, one of the first J-bloggers. And uh, I'm, I'm happy when we do it. The thing, I will tell you this about J-vlogging is you have to, it's becoming crowded. In the, in the beginning, all you have to do is show something Japanese. Look, this is Japanese, you know. Oh, look, I bought this in Japan. And that's it, right? But nowadays, man, everybody does the same crap. So if you're a J-vlogger, I, I beg you, please try to be more creative when you're introducing Japanese things because it just gets so boring to hear the same thing. Like, Today I'm going to try Japanese you know, tea coke. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to do it differently. Uh, I will. S there's a lot of good ones out there, though, and a lot of people do it in more creative ways, and I and I applaud them. Uh, that's a personal little um, you know pet peeve of mine. But uh, you know, the, it depends on what you want to be, what kind of J vlogger you want to be. Do you want to grow your channel? Do you want to be specifically one kind of J vlogger? What kind of J vlogger do you want to be? That's the question. So and that's uh, I guess another another whole bag of worms. I will try to make that video soon, though, because I, am, I, do, I do have that video right here in my head. I will do, say this real quick about anyone who's making videos or, or starting to make videos. Do not use copyrighted material at all. Just stop using that, okay? There's a lot of free stuff out there. You can get royalty-free, copyright-free, uh, public domain stuff. If you go to youtube.com slash partner island and look on the right, there's a whole list of places. Some of them don't work anymore. Some links, you know. Some of them don't work anymore, but some do. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if there's any more here. Um, but yeah, what my feedback from my viewers is pretty good. And I get emails all the time, and people want to be my friend on, and talk to me on Skype, which is kind of, I mean, no offense, but I'm 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 44 years old. I got my friends all. I'm pretty much full. You know, we're no no occupy you know, no no uh, no vacancies available at the moment. Um, <laughs> no, but honestly, uh, oh yeah, I will say this. I don't want fans. I don't want you to say you're my fan. Say you're my viewer. Say you're my hater. Say you're my love. No, love or not. Say you're my um, friend. I would like to hopefully meet some of you someday. Have a beer with you. If you're in Nagoya, I will. I'm the kind of guy who will meet you for a beer uh, or two. But this fan crap, I don't like that. Um, anyway, I do enjoy uh, Japan, but I do. Uh, I guess the one thing I'd have to say is I get tired of the same question over and over. You know, like, and, and the stupidity of things. You know, people. I got an email two days ago asking me. Is it true that if you're gay in Japan, you get executed? Like, no, it's not true. And I don't even usually answer questions of that, of that level of stupidity, or I should say ignorance, but, man, Google it. I always encourage you, please Google before you bother me with a question, because really, as, as Tokyo, TKYO Sam, and any Ko Tokyo Kuni apparently has said too, um, it, it's annoying to get questions like, what's the currency like there? How's the weather in Japan? I don't know, man. How's the weather in California? It's a big goddamn air space of area, you know? The weather varies depending on where you are. So questions like that annoy me. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I've said this before. And oh yeah, if you do come to Japan and you want to continue your education, I highly do recommend getting in, trying to get into some kind of program. Uh, finishing uh, your degree here would be a great way to uh, live here a longer time than, you, than, than just six months. All right. Anyway, that's my video. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, talk to you soon.